God is touching her right now. Right now. The Spirit of God is here. And He's moving. So we're just saying, Father, right now, as we speak to this situation, we speak to that blood sugar thing in her body. And we break that thing off of her. We cut off the assignment of the enemy against her. In Jesus' name. And we break that blood sugar thing with her. We command her sugar levels to stay steady and the same all the time. No more. No more insulin. No more of that stuff. The blood of Jesus took care of that at Calvary. And God, it was done. It was finished at Calvary. And so right now, we appropriate that in Jesus' name. And as we all stand together, you said, if two or more of us would gather together in your name and anything we agree on, you will do it. And so right now, we believe you're doing it. Right as we speak, you're doing it. And everything comes together for her right now. She is healed by the blood of the Lamb right now. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We just lift you high, God. We thank you. We thank you, God. We thank you for your touch. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're mighty, God. You're mighty, God. So, surprise, huh? <laughs> you get me today. Hallelujah. God might have to help me out a little bit, you know? Because after all, this is a prayer meeting, right? That's right. That's what it is. That's what we come here for is a prayer. And uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do some praying. We're going to do some. If you've got testimonies, I'd like to hear them. Because you know what? Every time I hear a testimony, that boosts my faith. And everyone in here, when they hear a testimony of something God has done, it lifts them up. And we need more of them in the church. You know? So many churches now, they don't they don't have testimony services. One I used to be in up in Indiana years ago, we had testimonies all the time. You know? We had actually microphones that would hang down in the aisles in the front and the back would hang down from the ceiling and the worship leaders would stand up there and somebody would come to the microphone it might be two or three of them and he would be the one that by the spirit would know which ones to pick or who to tell and he'd say okay go ahead brother and they'd turn his mic on and he would give a prophecy word of knowledge or a t testimony now if they stood up there and they did some Stupid stuff. Turn them off. They turn them off. You know, because they had control of the microphones, and, and the leader right. just say, you know, and they turn him off and go on somebody else. But it was a good idea. I knew we we thought that was a good idea, and I think they ought to implement it now in the church, where people can actually go and say some things as long as they're by the Spirit. You know, because there are some people that do some stupid stuff. <laughs> And they say some goofy things and so you know you have to cut them off but anyway we heard a lot of good testimonies all the time we had words of knowledge prophetic words all the time and probably a good half hour or so of the service was that half hour 45 minutes sometimes and uh, I think it's a good idea because now you hardly hear any testimonies in the church and I think that's a great disservice to the Lord because it helps boost the faith of everybody in the service. You know, you can get healed and if you don't ever have a chance to say it to the whole body then what good is it? You know, you're not giving God glory. He's losing on that. You know, and we ought to be able to people that want to always give God the glory and when we hear the testimonies of somebody getting healed or somebody being delivered or whatever man, it's amazing to me because it just make, it lifts the whole body up. And then others will stand up and say, yeah, I got healed too. You know, whatever. And that's like when we have word of knowledge here. Just uh, not too long ago, God gave me a word of knowledge for two different people. One of them I knew was sitting right over there. I knew it. I didn't point them out, but I knew it. And uh, one was for a blood disorder and another one I think for a rash on her body or whatever and God would deliver them. Neither one of them stood up. Neither one of them acknowledged it. 
but one came up to me at the end of the service and said, could I talk to you out in the back outside? And I said, sure. That was one of them. Why they don't do it, you know, and acknowledge it, because that's their healing. The other one called us a couple of days later, said that was me. I think, I knew it was that one over there, but what are you gonna do, you know? But that's your healing, you know? Yeah. And people need to understand that if, if there's a word, and I'm not saying just a general word, everybody needs something, you know? I'm saying if it's a specific word for somebody, or something you're going through, then that's when what God wants to touch you. Yeah. It's when he wants to manifest something right. and to just not acknowledge it or be shy about it or whatever. I, I remember, uh, you know, I, at the church I go to, I'll just give you an example. The church I went to, started going to, I don't know, we went about nine years ago, I guess. We've been going there. And they didn't have testimonies. They didn't even let you prophesy or say words of knowledge. Enough. If you had a word of knowledge, you had to go up to the assistant pastor and tell him, or the pastor, and then he would tell, say, go tell the assistant pastor. He'd go tell him. And by the time he went through a couple of them, they lose track of what you was even saying. And then he would get up and just say it with the announcements. And just say, well, somebody here needs a healing. And so they did that a few times. And I just said, that's it. I'm not, Lord, I'm not doing this anymore. You know, and I did it for quite a while. And then finally I talked to the pastor. And I said, you know, I would like to give the word of knowledge or the prophecy, prophecy, whatever, myself. He said, okay, I'll get you a microphone. <laughs> and so from then on, every time I'd walk up to the front, they would get me a microphone. Mm -hmm. And God, I was, I've was i been prophesying and giving words and seeing people heal ever since then. But see, that's just kind of a breakthrough, you know, in that place. Yeah. Now they're acknowledging it more and more all it takes sometimes is somebody to stand up and say you know we need to start doing this mm -hmm. you know i think they first had to get to know me a little better but yeah, that was that's part of it but because yeah. they probably got a lot of flakes <laughs> you know there's some there's flaky people all the time it doesn't matter whether you're christians or non-christians you know there are flaky people out oh, there yeah. and i've ran into a lot of them but anyway i know uh one day, one day I had a vision uh, and I saw a lot of people, a lot of uh, people getting delivered of rejection. You know, they'd had abuse and stuff in their life and they had a lot of rejection in their life. But in the vision, I saw, I was given the word and the pastor was sitting over there and the Lord said, I wanna include him in it because I don't want him to feel like you're, you know, you know how pastors are, they'll feel like I mean, they're getting second place on everything. So the Lord said, I want him included. So I said, okay, so the vision was I would give it. And then I tell the people started coming up to get delivered. I said, the pastor's gonna pray for you. <laughs> you know, he's gonna pray for you guys, all of them. But the pastor wasn't there. So I didn't give it. I waited because it was the vision wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's what you got to do. That's just some of the things that the Lord teaches you over the years about visions, words of knowledge, all that stuff. You do it if it's right with the vision. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't. He wasn't there. Somebody else was speaking. And he didn't come in until after the other speaker had done started. So, so that, I didn't do it. But the next week, he was there. Mm -hmm. And so I gave it. And there was probably 25 people got set free. Yeah. So you got to learn how to flow with the Holy Spirit and things. And it doesn't always, uh, if it doesn't look right, then you got to wait. You know, there's just, you'll have, he'll have you do some things that are just wild sometimes. And you got to be willing to do them. Because if you don't, you'll just bypass it. You know, we got to be people that are willing to step out and do what God wants us to do right when he says to do it, you know. And so many people hesitate. When you keep hesitating, 
and you lose that momentum, you lose that thing that God wants to do right then. You know, because God's, he's not slow at all. You know, he's kind of in a hurry sometimes. And uh, if he tells you to do something now or not do something, then that's what you need to do. Because I remember one time he, he had told me, uh, why don't you stand up and give us a word of knowledge. There's a man and he's going to be sitting right back here, back in the back, towards the back of the church. But he's going to, he told me where I, sit, I would be at, he's going to be right back there. He's got a bad knee. The doctor just told him he's going to have to have a replacement. Mm -hmm. wow. He said, so I want you to stand up and say that and point, that, point him out back there. I said, okay. So I did that. And that man was back there. He said, yeah, it's me. The doctor just told me that. You know, he lifted his hand. And uh, now the Lord and, and the pastor's wife was the one that came up there and was handing me the microphone. And that, they were not used to God doing stuff like this. I wasn't even used to it. <laughs> because he said, now I want you to reach into heaven and get one. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's right. So I reached up in, in, and I got one and I threw it back there. You know, he got hit by the Holy Ghost. He got his knee and her eyes were just staring at me, you know. Mine were probably pretty big too. You know, because I had never, that's the first time I'd ever done that. But God, if you will obey him, you'll get more and more and more. That's how it works. You know, if you don't obey him in the little things, he's not going to trust you with the bigger things. You know, and if we'll obey him in little things, that's to him, that's a little thing. To me, it was big, but that was a little thing to God. You know, he just said simple obedience, and that's the key. Simple obedience for all of us. And sometimes that means going and testifying, or maybe that means if you're in a supermarket or a store, and he says, witness to that person, then witness to him. You know, just talk to him. It's not hard. You know, it seems harder because the devil in your mind tries to make you think it's going to be hard. And he tries to he tries to get you to believe that, well, you know, there's people going to reject you and stuff. There's going to be people that are going to reject you for sure. You know, that's just life. But, you know, you went through life getting rejected a number of times probably. You know, people tell you they didn't want to talk to you or they, whatever. But, you know, all they can do is say no. But you did your job. You know, and I believe me, I've walked in supermarkets, stores. Actually, I go to the store sometime for my wife. And uh, there'll be somebody, he put produce away. And the Lord said, there he is. I just start talking to him about Jesus. Anybody ever tell you how much God loves? I start talking to him about his produce because I want to break the ice. You know, and then, then I say, anybody ever tell you how much God loves you and has a plan for your life? They know. I said, well, man, he does. You're missing the greatest thing could ever be. The greatest thing in life is knowing that you've got a home in heaven one day that you can go right with God because this life is just going to be fleeting. This body you're living in is going to the ground. And you don't know when that's going to be. It might be sooner than later. But if you can know where you're going to spend eternity, that's the greatest treasure you can have. And you just tell them stuff like that. And next thing you know, you're leading them to the Lord. You walk around a corner and there's somebody else putting something away. And you start talking to him. And he gets saved. Cashier. Nobody's behind us. So I took my liberties with him and he got saved. But it's not that hard. And I guarantee you, if you will speak boldly in his name right now, you're going to see a lot of people come into the kingdom because this is the hour for the harvest. This is the time. You know, it's no longer we're waiting on the great outpouring. It's happening. That's right. That's right. It's happening now. And we need to get in on it. If you don't get in on it, see, I, you get in on the Lord part of it, you'll get the big part later. Amen, amen. You know, you get to partake in the big things if you're faithful with the little ones. Yes, and that's that's a little one. Just spending a minute and talking to somebody. And it's really easy to do. It's easier than you think. 
the devil's the one that makes it hard he gets you thinking that's the problem too many people don't listen to their heart they listen to the mind and that's the mistake we make i had a i had a woman my wife and i we we were on the uh altar team at our church so people come up you know want prayer and we get to pray for a lot of people they get filled they come up and tell us all kinds of stuff they need and i said wait a minute we're going to pray for one thing not all of those things we're going to pray for one but the first thing we're going to take care of is have you got filled with the holy spirit yet and, so right. times, and a lot of times they'll say no i said well that's the first thing because we can pray for one thing and god will do it but when you get filled with the Holy Spirit and start speaking in tongues all the time, all these other things will just get taken care of. Hallelujah. You know, God will just take care of a lot of it, you know, that you don't have to worry about no more. Right. And we pray with a lot of them right there, and they get filled with the Holy Spirit. They get healed. We had one woman the other day that came up and said, so what's your problem? How can we help you? She said, oh, I've got this, my heart problem, you know, and I got COPD and all this. And I said, how do you know? She said, well, the devil told me, I said, <laughs> she's going through these symptoms and said, the devil told me I had it. And I said, wait a minute, who told you? I said, the devil. I said, why are you listening to the devil? Yeah. And I said, well, I said, well, listen, no more. You're not going to listen to him anymore. We prayed yeah. for it and she got instantly set free. Oh, I said, now don't you ever listen to him no more. Yeah. You know, you listen to God and you tell the devil where to go. Yeah. You know, from now on. And that's the problem. Too many people are listening to the wrong one. Yeah. And the world's full of it. You know, and <laughs> it's amazing how that so many people can tell you that they don't know how to hear the Lord's voice. And say, you can hear the devil's though, can't you? Yeah. You know, you listen to him all the time. You speak when he says to speak. You do what he says to do. So you don't have any problem listening to him. So why would you think you have a problem listening to a Amen. God of heaven and earth, the Almighty? Amen. Nobody can stay his hand or nobody can stay his voice. Why would you have a problem? And what it amounts to is you don't know how to recognize it. And he speaks to your spirit. He doesn't speak up here. He speaks to your spirit. And he speaks quietly a lot of times because he wants you to turn on a quiet voice. He doesn't have to pull on your tug on you or beat you to get you to do it. He wants to just be able to quietly say something to you. And you say, okay, Lord, I'll do that. But it's not about the voice. It's about what he's saying. That's where so many people miss it. Is they not listening. They're listening to, to hear some voice uh, booming from heaven and that very seldom happens but he's it's what he's saying because the yeah. devil's not going to tell you That's to right. do some of those things right. that he pray or give you a word of knowledge for somebody there's somebody here needs healing he won't care about healing anybody why would he tell you that that's the thing people don't recognize when god's talking when the devil's talking or when you're talking you know and you got to learn to discern those but we're going to open it up here. I'm going to let some people give a few testimonies, quick ones, testimonies. And uh, if we got, we'll be praying too. We're going to pray. I'm going to start having some of you come up. If you don't come up to pray, I'm going to call on you. <laughs> you know, come up. We're going to have prayer. We're going to pray for this nation. You know, for one thing, we need a lot of prayer in this nation. And that's one thing we're going to go after big time in here today is prayer for this nation. You know me, I always try to avoid coming up here and I can feel God says, no, share, share. I only argued with him for about 10 minutes there. But you know, he, you know, when you're talking about how you can reach people and everything, it and it comes in the most unusual way, whatever. Um, this was years ago, back in 2008, 2009, I had, uh, 2008, I had graduated, I was at this other church to be ordained as a pastor. And um, the day of the ordinate, you know, I mean, of the graduation, I aced everything out, the pastor, you know, the class, everything. And um, I held off on the ordination, I said, Lord, I told the pastor, I said, I want to wait 
I want to take a solid year and be prepared physically, mentally, spiritually, whatever, before I take that title. Because I used to think you had to have a title to serve God in the right. biggest way. Yeah, I mean, right. you know how some of the churches okay. are, whatever, you always okay. got to be a pastor or, or, you know, a deacon, whatever the case may be. Well, I, I finally took, I ended up leaving that church because God moved me. And of all places, he moved me here. But a year to the day of the graduation, I called the old pastor and I said, I'm ready to be ordained. And long story short, uh, somebody in the background heard that he was talking, oh, Miss Marty, it's good to hear from you, blah, blah, blah. And somebody in the background said, is that Marty? And then he's like, yeah. He goes, she had no business living here. She, she's supposed to be blessing us. She had no business leaving. Long story short, I didn't get ordained. Okay. So needless to say, I was disappointed for a couple of months, whatever, and all that I went through. But here's the funny thing. On Saturday morning, uh, you know, I was doing some cleaning and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, I hear God's voice say, go. I said, go, you know, and he says, go. And I just stood there. And he just said, go. So I just cleaned up, wore t-shirt, jeans, and you know, sloppy, whatever, but cleaned up and I got in the car and I'm like, where am I going? And he just said, go. He steered the car to the county hospital, okay? This was uh, back in uh, 2009, you know? Uh, he, he steers me to the hospital, have no idea what I'm doing there. And I go up to the, the main lobby and I just said, good morning. Oh, good morning. Yeah, da, da, da. Oh, by the way, where you want to go is on the fourth floor, the ICU uh, unit. All I said was good morning. And it says that that's where you'll get every, all the information you need. I didn't ask for information. I just stood there. And so I go, okay. So I get up on the fourth floor. I'm like, what am I doing? You know, I get up there and there's, it's divided into ICU and the trauma center, whatever. I go up there and I said, good morning. And they said, uh, oh, uh, good morning. Oh, yeah. Well, if you want to go through the doors there to the trauma center, and they will direct you to the person, you know. And I'm like, okay. All I kept saying was good morning, you know. I go in, and they said, oh, the room you want to go to is over there, and only her mom is with her. And I'm like, who's her? I had no idea what I was doing. I go in there. And, I mean, they got me in there. I mean, families could go in there, uh, you know, friends or whatever. It had to be, you know, you know how they are very strict, who goes in there. But here, they may have me go through. I walk in. A mom is there with her daughter. I found out that when she was in an accident, uh, they want to take her off life support. You know, I walk in, and she has no idea. I said, hi, my name is Marty. God sent me. That's what I said. And she's told me that she was given, you know, she's on life support and she has to make the decision to, to pull, you know, take her off. And she would be gone in about 24 hours or six hours after life support. She had three kids and the mother was trying to make the decision. Found out that her, her brothers, her own brothers, her own family says, just get her off that so we can go on with her life. In other words, they didn't even want to be bothered with it. You know what I mean? So, okay, so this is what's going on. So I spent time talking with the mother, and I said, you know what God told me? I said, this was a Saturday. I said, she will come too on Tuesday, leave her hooked up. You know, let him do his mighty work yeah. in, you know, in this situation. And I said, believe. And she was just a new believer, okay? And here's, here's the funny thing, and I will show this in a little bit. But what happened is that a cousin of the woman went to the church that had told me I could not be ordained. She was praying, God, my aunt's new and believing. Can you send a prophet over there? Can you send somebody over there to talk to my aunt so she can believe? You know what I mean? I didn't know that. I didn't know that until way later. But the thing was, so I said, leave her hooked up, and she will come to on Tuesday. We prayed. We did whatever. Uh, I, I'm on my way home. I said, how did that all happen? Then God spoke to me and said, 
you don't need a title to do my work. And it was since then, I never thought about it again. When he has an assignment for us, he's going to have you move in the way he wants you to move. Came to find out way later, like I said, it was the, the, the cousin that had prayed over her and wanted whatever. But because that she did leave her hooked up, she came to, but it made a believer out of the whole family. Wow. And they all served the Lord. Wow. All because right. she was, in, 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 and because of, you know, you never know how God's going to use you. Yeah. And it's just to be open, even if it doesn't make sense. But to have a heart to do his work no matter what. Boy, that is so encouraging for like we pray for people, we pray, Lord, send somebody to this person because I'm not out there and I'm not that it's all about me. Anyway, that is so encouraging. That woman who prayed got a prayer answered and a prophet got sent and it went into this whole story. So I have my own story I want to tell in a minute, but Sunday I had the most, we had the most powerful example of testimony at our church. Well, a good powerful, not the most. I go to First Christian just west of here, and in our church we have microphones in the aisles, and people respond to the sermon, and we hear a lot of testimonies, because we have a lot of people who are coming out of prison, a lot of people whose lives have been so transformed, and people can just respond to the sermon, and it's often their personal testimonies. What, it's powerful. But anyway, the guy who spoke on, on um, Sunday was with a, he's in a barrio ministering in Mexico, and they have seen so many transformations. You know, when you hear a testimony, there's power in the testimony, whether it's healing or salvation or deliverance. Sometimes it's a testimony straight out of the Bible. You know, the guy who was paralyzed, somebody hears that reading and um, they get healed. Sometimes it's a current, often a modern day testimony, somebody hears it, they get healed. Well, anyway, at our church, this the guy on Sunday talked about these different men in the Mexican culture, you know, the women are praying for the men or about to divorce the men, not only the Mexican culture, but he was, he was talking about the barrio in Mexico. And, you know these guys that had so many addictions and womanizing and then, you know the whole nine yards they got turned around and one is the, um, um, an assistant pastor now one teaches a class in this program they have called um, um, holistic family development because they're finding ways to serve in the community he teaches a class on emotional intelligence and they are just experienced such transformation and then our people got up and spoke through the microphone about what was going on in their lives so it's cool, you guys. Testimonies are powerful. So my encouragement the last couple of weeks has been where I do um, chaplain visits in a couple different places. I, I work for a company called Marketplace Chaplains, and one is um, Honor Health Rehab in Scottsdale. So I'm asked to go into different rooms, and you never know who you met, meet. Well, the last two weeks I've prayed with a woman um, about 45. She has kids that are 10 and 12. She had a stroke. And um, she works for a fitness company, Works. she should be so healthy, right? And she grew up in what she didn't want to describe as a cult, but it was, it was pretty serious. And then she's kind of in this place where all roads lead to the same place. And But she's crying when she tells me she just wants to be love and light to the people in her life. So we chat and I tell her, sometimes I say this, Christianity is the only religion. There's no other resurrection besides with Jesus and following him and what we call Christianity, except it's got so watered down. Well, anyway, we talked, and she she said, do you have any healing oil? I, yes, I do. So I anointed her with oil. That was the first time. She told me she prays against demonic spirits. I'm like, oh, that's interesting, you who... Um, are just kind of in this wondering, anything goes. And then this last week, she we took communion, and she wanted me to pray for her. And I just sense the Lord is really working in her life to get her away from any religious bondage that she grew up with and was trying to get away from. 
And plus, not to mention her, she's lifting her arm more, she's um, using a leg more, so she's getting healing after this stroke. So praise God. Well, this is about ongoing testimonies, okay? And, and I wanna just really encourage people to do like Brother Jerry and pray in grocery stores because I do that and I get so crazy blessed in grocery stores and uh, but anyway this Tuesday night <clears throat> I went to a meeting with the pastor who did Lori's memorial service okay and some of you you know him and and he he reminded me <clears throat> that he gave me a prophetic word on that date and he and the prophetic word was this he said in six months Things are going to turn around for you, and you'll you'll be still be grieving, but not so deeply. And uh, <clears throat> and so I started thinking, and I said, "Okay, when was six months?" And it was to the day six months after Lori passed over was October the seventh, and October the seventh was when all the crazy stuff started happening in Israel. Okay. And so I've been having ongoing conversations with my friends in Israel ever since then, almost daily. And so now, uh, and I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, God speaks to me a lot of different ways. And he speaks to me a lot through maps. I have world atlases and I have a, a four foot long road map of Israel hanging next to my bed. Okay. And so I woke up couple mornings ago and I heard the Lord say Kadesh Barnea okay so I'm looking on the map and and one of my favorite places to go and pray was Elat in in Israel and um, and that was like six plus years ago and I'm thinking okay God should I share this and all of a sudden somebody taps me on the shoulder and I turn around and it's Ruth that I met in Israel six plus years ago okay sitting in the back row back there she's from china she's become an american citizen by way of israel and it was it she has a pretty crazy testimony herself but anyway so i'm saying okay so as soon as and i turn when i turn and i'm thinking lord should i share all this and i turned around and there's Ruth, and it's kind of blowing my mind, you know. And I, so I said, yeah, you're supposed to share this. She's a confirmation, okay. So anyway, I hear Kadesh Barnea. And, and I'm, I'm reading this story about lift up your heads, O you gates, okay. And, and God uses us as gatekeepers, okay. And so I look at my map and Kadesh Barnea, there's this back road that goes from a lot along the Egyptian border all the way up to the to the southern end of Gaza, okay? And it's it's a road in the middle of nowhere. It's like a one-lane road and almost nobody travels this road, okay? So um, four days ago I get a, I get I get pictures and messages from one of my friends in Israel and they're, they're, they're camped out by the side of the road. The Lord told them to go there and be gatekeepers, okay? And what, it, what was happening there was there was like hundreds and hundreds of trucks. And some of you have probably seen this video going <clears throat> from the port of Alat up to Gaza, bringing provision for all the refugees and for all the people who are stuck there, okay? And this is hundreds and hundreds of semis full of mostly food, okay? Yeah. And, 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 and the spiritual warfare here is the world is saying the Israelis aren't helping these people. They're just, they're just, they just, you know, they're just causing problems and, and killing people unnecessarily. And then here's the proof, and my friends were validating the proof that all these trucks are coming full of provision, you know? <laughs> from the sea, you know, and in fact, there's some interesting scriptures about that. But anyway, and, and so, and that's that's why I came up here because I got this tap on the shoulder and I turned around and it was Ruth. And uh, I'm like, should I share about Israel? And I, I met her in Israel like six plus years ago, okay? 
she was staying with the woman who became Lori's best friend, okay? And the person who I have a lot of correspondence with lately. Um, so I'm saying all this to say, God wants to speak to you all the time, all the time. I've been hearing stuff from him, especially since that day, like amazing, amazing stuff and, 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 and seeing amazing, amazing answers to prayer. Some of you have seen my videos of the soldiers dancing in the streets and, and, and my friend who was a soldier for years told me that the young IDF by the thousands have accepted the Lord since October 7th. By the thousands. And I have a picture of thousands of them dancing and worshiping the Lord, which some of you guys have seen, and I'll turn this over. But, but I did all this to say, don't stop testifying, because God wants to give you stuff, and he wants you to encourage people no matter where you go. Yes. Listen what, to Jessica. Do you, what do you want to do, sis? What do you want to do, King? Go ahead. Make them kind of quick. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jessica. I just wanted to come up and just give uh, God the glory and the honor, um, the blessing, the praise that he deserves. Um, within a period of four months, I've been delivered from a drug addiction and alcoholism. Hallelujah. Um, Hallelujah. Uh, I was healed of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, right. And um, I was also healed uh, from a cyst in my ovary as well. With the, well, I can feel God's presence. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just want to give God glory, honor, and praise. He said, That's why we ought to hear it right there. Yeah. Okay, well, I had a phone call this morning from Dee, and because she wanted me to. Uh, fill in Sister Ruth on a couple more details that she uh, wasn't even aware of when she spoke with Sister Ruth, I think yesterday maybe. Um, anyway, most of us know that she was in a bad accident on December 23rd. She said it was 10 a.m. and I think it was something like 23 bones in her body wow. or that, that they knew of. Wow. Or broken, so she's been in rehab and she's doing quite well right now. But um, what she, the details she was telling me that she wanted me to share with Sister Ruth today, was that um, uh, she just learned that okay, that was 10 a.m. on the 23rd. Well, 4 a.m. the next morning, December 24th, her grandson John, God woke him up and impressed him he had to go to the hospital because his grandmother was giving up. And so he got up and got dressed and went to the hospital. Now she said he's been kind of running from God, but God got a hold of him and used him here. And it was, she now knows that it was, um, it was due to him that she even made it, that she would have died. She was touch and go, in and out, and um, uh, having all kinds of trouble. So uh, her, I believe it's her daughter that was also in the accident, Charlene, um, she was in the ER downstairs because, you know, she'd been hurt too. Um, they brought her up uh, to her mother and uh, the worst it, it injuries she had apparently was torn ligaments. But um, so then they brought her up and she was sitting with her mother with Dee and just holding her hand and begging her, please, Mom, don't leave me, don't leave me alone, don't leave. And um, so, it, so it was because of God uh, waking John up and sending him to, to the hospital and uh, all of this that they, uh, Dee wouldn't, wouldn't be alive right now if it wasn't for that. So we're praising God. And her current condition, she's able to walk back and forth to the bathroom, uh, up and down the hall with her walker and with the physical therapist with her. She's still in a rehab facility, but um, she said she may be going home next week for home therapy. So it's totally worth it. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, on December 18, oncoming traffic came 
and was going at least at 50 miles an hour and hit me head on. So I'm already a walking miracle. I really believe God took a lot of the impact and got me to the curb. He hit me from the middle lane at least to the curb, not incoming traffic. But the reason I'm, you know, uh, Steve brought me last time. And when I came in, I felt, because I had a concussion, symptoms of a concussion, I felt dizzy, foggy, couldn't remember things, mixed up words, some of the, and extremely sensitive to sound. And in my church, I couldn't even be in the worship service. Um, and I'm just sharing what happened. After you guys prayed, uh, the fogginess left, the um, memory things left, and um, just uh, the dizziness left. And it meant so much to me. Now there's a few things like I'm able to be in my church now with earplugs. You know, there's more to go, but it was a big deal to me. Yeah. You know, that was a big deal to me. So thank you for praying. I appreciate it. A little fracture, but everything is getting better. Hallelujah. whether or not it should come up here. I felt the Lord saying, yes, my name is Julie. And a few years ago, the Lord asked me to produce a movie about life. And so I'm in the process of doing that. He asked me uh, to use all of the money that I have, which I have done. And now I'm in a place of walking in faith. But about six weeks ago, I saw in a vision the word interesting with the T being a cross. And I said, oh my gosh, because one of the things the Lord said to me was this, use all the money you have and I will bring the rest. And it won't look like how it, you think it's going to be. So when I had this vision, I said, okay, Lord, this is a really good witnessing tool because what is interesting to one person, you know, it opens up the door to witness and share your testimony, whatever that is, because someone comes and say, well, what's so interesting? And then that's it. So I had the idea, I got with the graphic artist, he made exactly what I had envisioned and I saw in the spirit. And New Year's Eve, I went to um, a church and this woman said to me, oh, you need to go and talk with Printify. And my, of course, my flesh rose up. I thought, oh, well, that's not the way it is. Well, you know what? God has his ways. So in a nutshell, God has opened up a door and I'm selling these um, interesting t-shirts. I'm just in the very beginning process of getting the word out there, but I believe that God is, this is how might be, I don't know, because we don't know, all, we know only in part, right? But I'm believing that this is part of how God is going to bring the funds so that the rest of the movie can be done. Um, we're in post-production, and I just trust the Lord. So I give him the glory. You know how important testimonies are. You know, they're very important. In fact, the word testimony, it comes from a it's a masculine word, which means to repeat it, to do it again. It means to do it again. And so when we share testimonies, there's power in that testimony to repeat it, to do it again. So just remember that. When you hear somebody got healed of something, you, you probably ought to go over to that person and say, pray for me, I got that. Or whatever, whatever's going on, let them pray for you because that power is there to repeat it, to do it again. While I'm standing here, I'd like us to pray for this nation. Yes. Yes. Sister's going to come up, though, in just a minute. We prayed for you just a little bit ago, too. Yes. Something must have shifted. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyway, we're going to pray for this nation. Amen. And I know if you, any, all of you here, uh, Dutch Sheets, giving 15, yes. stuff. He's talking about recently about the waterways, the dams, yes. that there's a whole prayer movement going on because they've been it's been uh, said that there's going to be some attempts on the waterways the water systems the dams from terrorists he said if we pray for them we begin to pray and come against that we lock that thing up so they're not going to do anything in fact i saw in a dream the other night and i saw these uh guys that were 
they were dressed like they worked at the Hoover Dam because you can go down in yeah. at Hoover Dam and where they're doing all you know the, the works are all down in there. You can walk down in there and walk through there. They walked through there dressed as workers, but they were terrorists. And so I began to work, play against that, say, God, you're setting angels over that dam. You're setting angels in there, warring angels that will not let these people come in. And so that's what we're going to pray, because we need the water. We don't need terrorists blowing up our dams, messing up our water systems, the ports, where all the stuff, food comes in. So right now, in Jesus' name, just stand up with me. Let's pray. Father, right now, in Jesus' name, we enter in and we join together as one.